Hey y'all, it's Samantha Jean from Faith Bible Church of Tarboro. We are back again live on the Victorious Christian Radio Ministry. Amen. So I'm excited y'all. Pastor Dave has been filling in for me and so I'm so thankful for him and the messages that the Lord has been speaking through him in regards to seasons of life. Amen. And so we get this from Ecclesiastes 3 and it says to everything there is a season a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to plug up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything. Everyone say everything. <laughs> everything. God hath made everything beautiful in his time. And so Pastor Dave has been coming with us with different messages on seasons of life. And last week he talked about a time to kill, amen? How it takes time to kill these things, right? How we ought to mortify the deeds of the flesh. How we ought to crucify the flesh every single day. How we ought to take up our cross daily and follow Jesus Christ, amen? Wholeheartedly be dedicated to Jesus Christ. And then also, you know, partnerships with the world. You know, the Bible says that we ought to put it to death. Amen. We ought not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That's important. Amen. And then also any relationships with the devil. You know, the Bible says neither give place to the devil. And so we ought not have fellowship with darkness, right? Light and darkness don't mix. (laughs) Amen. And so it's important that we crucify these things, that we kill these things. And so Pastor Dave was talking about a time time to kill. And so this week we are going to be talking about fierce raging storms. Amen. How many of y'all have been through a fierce raging storm? How you didn't know how you were going to get through that storm where you felt as though you were drowning. Amen. And so we are going to be talking about the fierce raging storms. And there are three different accounts of this story in the gospels. There's one in Matthew 8, 23 to 27. There's one in Mark 4, 35 to 41. There's one in Luke 8, 22 through 25. So we will plan to read the account in Luke. And I plan to add together the three different accounts in recap. And y'all, I encourage you to read these gospels for yourself and compare the three gospels and gain new perspective from each and every one okay and so we are going to read in luke 8 22 through 25 again that's luke 8 22 through 25 the bible says now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into the ship with his disciples meaning jesus and he said unto them let us go over unto the other side of the lake and they launched forth but as they sailed he meaning jesus fell asleep And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water, and were in jeopardy. And they came to him, and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose, and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and water, and they obey him. So praise God. I love this story, y'all, because, you know, we all go through those fierce raging storms. We all have moments that we fear. We all have moments that we lack (laughs) faith and trust in God. Amen. And so I love how they have this story. And so just a little recap, adding the three different gospels together. Amen. I'm just going to read it for y'all. Now it came to pass on a certain day when the even was come, they had sent away the multitude. There is a call or an invitation for Jesus' disciples to go by faith with Jesus to the other side of the lake. Amen. For Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go over. Let us pass over unto the other side of the lake. 
Jesus went into a ship. When Jesus was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. They launched forth or set out, saying yes to Jesus' invitation to go to pass over to the other side of the lake, to go on this new faith adventure with Jesus Christ. Amen. So Jesus falls asleep in the ship, and behold, there arose a fierce, raging storm, a great tempest in the sea, a great storm of wind on the lake. The waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Their boat literally filled with water. The Bible says they were in jeopardy. Oof. Oh, man. Everyone say they were in jeopardy, man. They were in jeopardy. They were in danger of loss, danger of harm. Perhaps one of those moments where they had literally seen their lives flashing before their eyes, thinking, man, is this it? Is this how I'm going to die? (laughs) In fact, in the midst of this fierce raging storm, Jesus was in the hinder part of the ship. He was asleep, (laughs) y'all. He was literally asleep on a pillow. That's right. You know, the Bible says, Great is our Lord, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. God is omniscient, y'all. God is all-knowing, to whom possesses complete knowledge and understanding of all things past, all things present, all things future, Jesus being the omniscient, all-knowing, all-powerful, sovereign God that he is, already knew beforehand that this fierce raging storm would appear out of nowhere, like poof, (laughs) appear out of nowhere. However, Jesus still invites his disciples to go by faith with him to the other side. Now Jesus is asleep in the midst of the fierce raging storm. And Jesus' disciples came to him. They awoke him saying, Master, Master, which means teacher, Lord, save us, we perish. Master, carest thou not that we perish? Jesus arose and rebuked the fierce winds and raging waters, saying unto the sea, Peace, be still. Both the wind and waters miraculously ceased. Amen. The Bible says in Luke 8, 24, that there was a calm. However, in both Matthew and Mark, the Bible says there was a great calm. Jesus indeed miraculously calmed the fierce, raging storm. Praise God. Jesus then asks his disciples these raw and real questions that we too must consider ourselves, especially when we are in the midst of fierce, raging storm in our own lives. Amen. In Matthew 8, Jesus asks, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? In Mark 4, Jesus asks, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And in Luke 8, Jesus asks, Where is your faith? The men marveled. They feared exceedingly. They, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? Who is this man who commandeth even the winds and sea to cease? Not only does this man command the winds and seas to cease, but the wind and the sea actually obey him. (laughs) I'll tell you who this man was, y'all. This man is a man named Jesus Christ. He is the Prince of Peace, the Almighty God, all-powerful, sovereign God, who did this impossible miracle right before their eyes. Can I get an amen? (laughs) Praise God. So, may I ask y'all? Has God ever invited you to go to the other side with him? You know, Jesus desires for us to unlock and unleash the full potential, becoming the man and the woman, the fierce kingdom building warriors that he has created and called us to be. Amen. Jesus desires to use every single one of us in such a mighty, powerful way for his glory to turn this world upside down for Jesus Christ. And you too are invited to go to the other side by faith into the unknown with Jesus. Now perhaps Jesus has indeed invited you, right, to go to the other side with him. You begin taking these specific faith steps of obedience that God has called you to take. You begin walking by faith into the unknown with Jesus Christ not knowing exactly what to expect when arriving at your destination. You know, Jesus gives you divine peace. He gives you divine courage. He gives you faith needed to begin launching forth as you say yes to this invitation, to begin launching forth doing what God has divinely called you to do. 
perhaps some of y'all that are listening on the radio broadcast are just so very desperate, right? To become that sister or that brother that Jesus has called you to be, to become the mom or dad that Jesus has called you to be, to become the wife or the husband that Jesus has called you to be, to become the man or the woman, the warrior that Jesus has called you to be, that you are literally willing to leave perhaps everything that you've ever known behind. You know, I think of Abraham, how God had called him to leave everything behind, right? To go to a place that he didn't even know where he was going, but he went by faith. And some of y'all, Jesus has called you to walk by faith into the unknown with him, not knowing how things are going to play out, not knowing where you are even perhaps going. And so you were willing to take that step of obedience in faith. Amen. You were willing to leave your old life behind. You were willing to leave those ungodly, harmful friendships behind. You were willing to leave that old lifestyle behind, that of which was only leading you down the broad path leading to destruction. Perhaps you chose to go to this new place, right, that God has called you to with new surroundings, full of new people in hopes to build this new abundant Christian life that Jesus Christ has so freely offered. Amen. Getting the healing or the recovery, that of which only comes from Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by Jesus Christ. Amen. And so how many of you all can relate, right? That perhaps you begin taking these specific faith steps of obedience that Jesus has literally invited you to take with him, right? You begin walking by faith into the unknown with Jesus Christ. Then dun, dun, dun. All of a sudden, y'all, poof. Out of nowhere, a raging storm suddenly appears. When caught in the midst of this fierce raging storm, perhaps you've felt this way before. The winds and waves are crashing down all around you. Complete chaos and confusion completely surrounding you. Feeling as though you are totally falling and sinking. Feeling as though you are in complete major jeopardy. Situations and circumstances appearing seemingly impossible. How many of y'all have felt this way before? When caught in the midst of this fierce raging storm, perhaps these same questions and thoughts have relentlessly consumed your mind. Jesus, help! Where are you in the midst of this fierce raging storm? Where are you in the midst of this chaos and confusion? Where are you in the midst of this pain and suffering? Where are you in the midst of this heartbreak and grief? Where are you in the midst of this extremely hard season? Where are you in the midst of this fiery trial? Where are you in the midst of this intense spiritual battle? Jesus, where are you? Are you asleep? Are you giving me the silence treatment? Jesus, help. Why are you so seemingly silent? Are you even hearing my relentless, tear-filled prayers? Did I do something to cause you to abandon me, my Jesus? Do you still love me even when I keep making the same mistakes? Do you still love me even when I'm a complete hot mess? Where are you, my sweet, loving Jesus? So how many of y'all have thought some of these questions before at one point in your life or perhaps you're even thinking these questions right now as you go through this fierce raging storm these relentless questions and thoughts constantly flowing through your mind leaving you fearful and doubting your all-powerful sovereign god taking your eyes off of jesus focusing on all the chaos around you beginning to sink in the midst of this fierce raging storm distorted perspective become raw and real reality while in this fierce, raging storm. Feeling as though you are totally at the end of your rope, finally reaching your breaking point and hitting rock bottom. Jesus being your only hope through this fierce, raging storm, you finally surrender and humbly admit that you can literally do nothing without Jesus. Tears literally streaming down your face as you humbly fall on your knees, reaching your hands out to Jesus, desperately crying out for divine help. Jesus, help, being the only words flowing out of your mouth. Jesus reaches down to help you out of that fierce, raging storm. May you focus your eyes back on Jesus Christ as Jesus pulls you out of deep waters. May you be filled with God's perfect peace as you trust in your sweet, loving Jesus. All for God's glory in the mighty name of Jesus. 
May you then boldly go and testify of the miraculous things that Jesus has done for you, telling all about this man named Jesus who saved and delivered you from eternal fiery hell. Y'all, are you in the midst of the fierce raging storm right now? Are you full of fearful thoughts and concerns today? If you are in this place right now, I am here to give you some hope and encouragement, amen? You know, a fisherman, he typically has an anchor, right? That of which is a metal device, is attached to their boat by a cable or chain. It's used to be lowered to the bottom of the sea to hold and secure a vessel in a particular place, preventing the boat from drifting in the midst of the fierce raging storms in order to combat fierce winds or strong currents, that of which want to move the vessel off course. Beloved warrior, may I lovingly remind you today that oftentimes Jesus will indeed call you to take courageous steps of faith. When God calls you to courageously go by faith to the other side, walking by faith into the unknown with Jesus Christ, fierce raging storms of life will indeed come. What ought we to do when God invites you to take steps of faith, walking by faith into the unknown with Jesus Christ? These fierce raging storms come. Fearful thoughts and concerns begin consuming your mind. You do all that you know to do, but yet these fierce raging storms aren't ceasing. You have no clue what else to do. While in the midst of this fierce raging storm, may we never forget God's unfailing, everlasting, agape love. For after all, God sacrificially gave Jesus Christ to die in our place on that old rugged cross. May we never forget who our God is. The Bible says, The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. The Lord is the anchor for our soul. He is our only, sure, secure foundation. Our God is unchanging. He is the God of the impossible. And there is no one like our sweet, loving Jesus. May I ask, is there anything too hard for our almighty God? The Bible says, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Y'all, is there anything our God is not able to do? (laughs) God is able to save you. The Bible says, Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Y'all, God is able to deliver you. The Bible says, And call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. God is able to supply your every need. When we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the Bible says that all these things shall be added unto us. Our God shall supply all our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In fact, y'all, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Y'all, God is able to heal you. The Bible says, Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. God is able to carry you through this fierce, raging storm. And you can be confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Y'all, God is able to keep you from stumbling. The Bible says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Can I get an amen? (laughs) Praise God. In fact, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Y'all, everyone say out loud, God is able to do all things. Without God, we can do nothing. However, with God, we can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth us. 
Y'all, is there anything that is literally impossible for our God? With men, the situation, the circumstance, whatever it is you are going through may seem impossible, amen? But with God, all things are possible. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And my friends, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Our God is more than able to make a way where there seems to be no way. Nothing is impossible with God. So while in the midst of this fierce raging storm, and it appears as if God's abandoned ship, may we always remember God's faithful promises and God's pure, powerful word. While in the midst of this fierce raging storm, and it appears God is completely silent, may we never stop faithfully praying to Jesus, perhaps even consider praying scripture when you have no other words to pray. One scripture is found in Psalm 69, that of which says, Lord, deliver me out of the mire, let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me, and out of the deep waters, let not the water flood overflow me, neither let the deep swallow me up, let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. Hear me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Hide not thy face from thy servant, for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily, draw nigh unto my soul, and redeem it. Deliver me because of mine enemies. Y'all, in the midst of this fierce raging storm, when your life appears to be in complete jeopardy, may you lovingly be reminded, as Jesus lovingly reminds me, that God is our good, faithful, omnipotent, all-powerful, all-sufficient, all-knowing, sovereign God, who is in complete control of everything. Jesus, with the sound of his voice, can say, Peace, be still, and calm every fierce, raging storm of life. So when you are afraid in the midst of that fierce, raging storm, may you not fear. The Bible says, fear not. For when we pass through waters, Jesus will be with us. In fact, God's presence is with us wherever we go, for he promises to never leave us nor forsake us. When we are in need of deep inner peace, Jesus offers divine peace, not of this world, but rather peace that passeth all understanding, keeping our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Therefore, may we be still and know that He is God, and willingly lay aside every weight and besetting sin. May we run with patience the race set before us, keeping our eyes stayed on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, wholeheartedly trusting in our sweet, loving Jesus, that we might be kept in perfect peace. When we are in jeopardy and in major trouble, may we remember this truth in Psalm 9, verses 9-10. through 10. The Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. May we always remember another important truth found straight from the word of God. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ that loved us. May we be fully persuaded, deep down inside, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. While in the midst of this fierce raging storm, instead of running away from our sweet love in Jesus, in the very place that Jesus has divinely called us, may we wholeheartedly run to our sweet love in Jesus. And in the midst of this fierce raging storm, when the enemy whispers relentless lies in our mind, tempting us to quit and go back to that old lifestyle, may we not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Y'all, just as fishermen have an anchor for their boat, 
keeping them firmly secure in hopes to remain on course. May we too remain securely attached to the only sure, steadfast anchor of our soul, Jesus Christ. And as we faithfully run to Jesus patiently enduring this painful, fiery season, we will one day rejoice looking back at this season, realizing our faithful, sweet, loving Jesus was divinely there by our side the whole entire time. Can I get an amen? So there's a song called Oceans by Hillsong United, and the words say this, You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown where feet may fail, and there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep my faith will stand. Your grace abounds in deepest waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide, where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed and you won't start now. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters, wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. I will call upon your name. Keep my eyes above the waves. My soul will rest in your embrace. I am yours, and you are mine. And then, of course, I think of the song Cornerstone by Hillsong. And the words say this, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. His oath, his covenant, his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. When he shall come with trumpet sound, O oh, may I then in him be found, dress in his righteousness alone, faultless stand before the throne. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love, through the storm he is Lord, Lord of all. Praise God. So for all those who are going through a fierce raging storm right now, literally losing hope and strength, seeing no way out of this storm, I pray that God's overwhelming presence would surround you. I pray that God's divine peace would fill you. I pray that God's divine power and strength would be upon you. I pray for God's divine perseverance to empower you to keep going. All for God's glory in the mighty name of Jesus.